Hey everyone, Tom here. Today we'll be talking about the latest stock market news as well as our technical analysis thoughts on the S&P 500, NASDAQ, gold and the FTSE 100 right now. What we're seeing right now is a tale of multiple different stock markets around the globe. Some are strong, some are certainly not as strong as others. Why is this happening? Well, we'll be answering that and more in this video. Stay tuned. As we like to do together, we always want to be looking at the futures whenever we're approaching a trading day. I like finviz.com, it's got a good futures heat map. And right now the notables are that we've seen a bit of risk on in terms of equities. We've seen a lowering of VIX for the morning and we've seen some pretty strong action out of gold and silver today in the Asian sessions. So really, there's not too much to be going on on a Monday, but it's more about the technical levels that we're approaching that are key. So let's get stuck right into it. Firstly, I want to mention gold. Now, I've already drawn up this level. We mentioned last week that we've pretty much seen that topping pattern where we had the resistance of the 1980, and I said that this was a temporary kind of high. So really that every single time people were going to see this 1980, they would be most likely taking profit. And that seems to be holding true so far. There's been take profiting around the 1980, but more importantly, there's been a series of higher lows. So we've had a really strong kind of buying off this trend line down here, all forming an ascending triangle. So what do we know about ascending triangles? Well, we know that ascending triangles, if they break out above, usually go a distance. That's the good thing about pattern analysis is we can kind of figure out a distance for the market to go. So we can take usually around two thirds of the way through, which is about here and then we can extrapolate that out and it takes us to around 2040. So 2040, if it got above, seems kind of likely. The one other thing that's pretty interesting about this is that notice how it's forming this kind of resistance peak just before the magical 2000. This often happens as well. The market usually either tops out or kind of finds a resistance just before a key zone as that's where all of the big traders take their profits. And then of course it breaks through that zone and strengthens. How do you wanna be doing this? Would you say, hey Tom, would I trade this right now and buy it? Usually it's not actually the best to buy ascending triangles when they get to their last kind of third. You wanna buy them usually in this zone. You wanna see them kind of close up here. The longer an ascending triangle goes and forms, as it's if it forms into this base, it's basically going to be petering out and it shows a weakness in the trend and a weakness to be able to break that key level. So you wanna see a confirmation close above. We always talk about that on this channel. And then you would wanna see, of course, a retest of the previous resistances. And the great thing about the resistances on ascending triangles is that they act as great support. So then we'd usually see a bounce and then hopefully a movement to the 2040. And this is of course from a technical perspective and you should do your own analysis to make your own decisions. Another thing that can happen is that we see gold really weaken through this zone and I would expect the 50 exponential moving average and this level to make some sense from a buying perspective. So you could always be looking at these kind of alert levels on gold this week. Certainly some interesting stuff there. But what I really want to discuss today is the different stock markets around the world and how they're all interacting together. So we're seeing a bit of a decoupling effect from the strength of the US 500, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ to the Dow, the Russell 2000, and of course, the FTSE 100 in the UK and the ASX 200 and even the German 30. All of these other economies that don't necessarily have the same amount of fiscal stimulus in them are not doing so well. So the UK 100 has actually really started turning over. It's actually failing to really make new series of highs and it becomes quite apparent when you look at the weekly here. But I think where it becomes even more interesting is when you dial into the smaller timeframes. So really, if you're on a four hour chart and you're looking at this FTSE, take a look at these patterns that are forming and take a look at where the market is right now. So the first thing is we've had a very clear kind of resistance up here at the top. Another thing is that you'll note that there's a clear level of kind of support around this zone. And what is that? It's a key psychological number, the 6,000, a very key 1,000 level on the stock markets. We know the stock market's like gravitating to these key psychological levels and it's clearly closed below. So now we're seeing price pressuring up 
And at the same time it hits this 6,000, it's going to be hitting a 20 exponential moving average. So this is all very significant because we now have a clear channel above. We've got a pretty clear break here and we're seeing that conservative entry back to the 6,000 level. So this is that point where you usually see that hopefully lightning bolt effect down where we see a change of trend on the smaller time frames and further weakness in the direction of the break of the channel. Now, why do I say that? Because there's many people that obviously want to short the stock markets right now. There's many people with their bare boots on and I totally understand why. So looking at the US market, it's always been very difficult to get involved in the bearish side. I mean, it's clearly in an uptrend. It's very difficult to technically see any selling in those markets. But when you look at some of the other stock markets, we've got things like 2050 crosses on the daily here to the sell. We've got a clear kind of break of a key zone. We have a clear idea of where the market should move next being the difference of the channel range and we can take that and then extrapolate it out and see whether the market makes sense to that level and you can see previous supports at that kind of 56 40 zone make sense to this level so if you're looking at doing bearish moves while it's hard to fight the fed we're all very well aware of that on this channel it's maybe not as hard to fight the fiscal stimulus in countries that don't have that kind of benefit of the fed and benefit of congress basically saying trillions trillions we'll just print it all and we'll just give it to the markets and we'll give it to everybody and we'll make sure everything's all good so it's something where i guess if you're more bearish I don't necessarily think it's best to look at the S&P 500 to look at the other markets. It possibly is better to look at the FTSE. And we discussed this when I first started this channel only a few months ago. I was talking about how these markets are going to show further weakness than the S&P. When it comes to the ASX 200, it's a very similar kind of pattern. We've got this ascending triangle that's failed here. It's closed below. If anyone's aware, I'm in Melbourne here in Australia and we're in stage four lockdown. It's basically martial law. I'm not allowed to actually go outside my house at all anymore. So it's 9.27 p.m. And if I went outside the front of my house right now, I believe I would be fined around 1600 Australian dollars. So we're clearly in a very serious lockdown and our government has decided to make that move. And our economy is obviously suffering a bit from that. We're not seeing necessarily the same kind of fiscal support again as America and our stock market has a lot more oil and other things going on in it. So because you understand the stocks inside the market, it's definitely failing to make those highs. So we've got a clear level of resistance here with the body closes over on the right hand side, a lot of wicks through it up to the 6200. But we've seen weakness coming into this week. It's testing this trend line right now on the daily. And if we see that turnover, then I don't see why we wouldn't be able to retest those kind of 5700 levels on the ASX 200. There definitely is some weakness going on here. On to the US 100 or the NASDAQ. Obviously, a lot of people love trading this one. And if you're looking more to the bull side, it makes a case for sure to be looking at America. What do we know about this crisis? We know people are moving online. We know there's a lot of fiscal stimulus and there's a lot of people buying stuff online and those kind of things. Who directly benefits from that? It's no secret right now. Online companies, they're making lots of money. We saw that in the earnings only last week with Amazon reporting strong and same with Apple. So we've clearly got a bit of a channel here in terms of the technical analysis. Now, would you be buying at this level? I don't think so. You probably wouldn't want to necessarily buy right here. But if the market got through and confirmed close above, it becomes a different story, at least from technical analysis. Now, you may say, Tom, that's stupid. Why would I do that? It's about seeing that momentum shift. It's like gold. We want to see the market get ready to move to the next zone, whether it breaks it through news, whether it breaks it for just a technical reason or people are getting into it, it's broken it for a key reason. And once it gets above this psychological 11,000 kind of 30 zone on the futures here, it becomes a very serious kind of pattern where you take the difference of the channel and that difference, depending on whether you're looking at the futures or the real market, will be around 11,500 to 11,600. So we'll see usually a market break, come back down, test the previous resistances that become support, and then of course put pressure on the market. Now for some bears, what they'll be doing is they'll put little stop losses above these zones, and then of course they'll sell it as it comes to the resistance. 
And that can work sometimes. It's one of those kind of high risk, high reward type of trades. You're going against the trend. You're obviously betting that this is a channel effectively and that it will move back down to the 10,500 and they can work quite regularly. You're usually better off actually buying the bottom of the channels because you're in the direction of trend rather than selling the tops. But I understand why people want to do that. Just remember the Fed and Congress are really working against you on this market and just the general kind of spending habits of people right now. When it comes to the S&P 500, we're still approaching that key zone. Monday seems to be the day we're going to test these key areas. We spoke about how if we get a break above this shooting star, how significant that is in terms of taking out stop losses and of course showing that bearish sentiment is well and truly beaten down again. It happened over here on the left hand side where it got beaten down and quickly moved up. And if it breaks past this level, it seriously exposes 3400 highs again. So we'd expect it to break, come back down, retest and then of course the 3400 to be reached. So the S&P 500 is another one of those that's showing pretty nice strength because of the tech stocks. And again, the American market is obviously way stronger than the UK market or the Oz market or the German market right now. And while they're turning over and not looking so good, this market just continues to power on. So if you're looking at the buy side, maybe it's the American market. If you're looking at the sell side, maybe it's the UK market. It's up to your decision how you choose to play these kind of things, but I just want to give you a bit of a different opinion on things right now. And it makes a big difference understanding the pillars underneath these economies. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video today. If you have, remember to subscribe and of course hit that alert button, give us a like and comment down below if you've been looking at some of these other stock markets. I always think it's worthwhile expanding your horizons, especially during times when we have a very manipulated market such as the S&P. Obviously, if you're in the direction of the Fed, it doesn't hurt, but if you're trying to fight them, try not to. Stay healthy, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye.